So, tante no totemak a kamama kniti gasan pigito wakan skahigan ochinia a meskochi wuskahigan ochinia. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm my name is Mackenzie Brown, and I'm the project manager with Indigenous Tourism Alberta. And we're really excited. We have another awesome webinar for you guys today and it's all on kind of travel media what is travel media how can you work with travel media and all of those different logistics um, before we continue i'd like to just mention that uh, we acknowledge that we're on treaty six territory and all three of the presenters are from amiskwachiwaskahagan edmonton and we all make edmonton our home so we're really excited to be working in the tourism industry within treaty six territory and I wanted to mention to everybody as well, um, I guess I should maybe put in my headphones, that would probably be easier for people to hear. Uh, I wanted to just mention to everybody as well that if you have any questions at any point in time, feel free, we have a question and answer little chat or there's a regular chat as well that you can post your questions in and we'll have a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, we're going to get started here. So we have one of our really awesome partners here today with us. So we work really closely with Explore Edmonton and Explore Edmonton is the destination marketing organization within the Edmonton region. And we have the travel media team here today. So I'm going to introduce our, our presenters to us who are going to take take it away and uh, explain to us about their awesome job working in travel media and they have extreme expertise in this area. So I'm really excited to introduce to you guys, Meredith and Nancy from Explore Edmonton. Hi everyone, welcome to Travel Media 101. Um, thanks to everybody for taking the time to be with us today. We're really excited to share with you what it is we do. So my name is Meredith and I've been with Explore Edmonton for six years and I look after the markets of the US, Canada and China. And my favorite thing about Edmonton is all the awesome farmers markets. Awesome. Yeah, my name is Nancy Gordy and I've been with Explore Edmonton Co for four years now. Um, and one of my favorite things to do in the city is go to the Edmonton Music Folk Festival. Um, and as you can see, I look after the UK, Germany, and Netherlands markets. Um, and while we won't go into much uh, detail about those markets in this webinar, um, those are the markets we're normally active in. However, due to COVID, things have slightly changed. Um, there are a lot of great resources, both on exploreedmonton.com and on the uh, Travel Alberta industry site um, that we would encourage you to take a look at, however, to get a little bit more in depth into those uh, those markets. But first, let's take it back um, and we'll start off with what exactly travel media entails. So uh, next slide, please. Awesome. Okay, what is travel media? So our team plays an integral role in creating compelling stories that drive awareness to our destination and engage with consumers. So through media relations, public relations, digital and social media, we drive year-round visitation while building resident confidence and appreciation of our visitor economy. So we're here to help build our city's image by pitching and securing coverage to generate buzz for Edmonton as a year-round travel destination. So it's our job to help travel writers, editors, bloggers, social influencers, um, photographers, anyone who produces travel content to generate the information that they need to tell Edmonton's story. And the diagram to the right shows the path to purchase for a traveler. So our work in travel media falls in the awareness phase, which you can see kind of in the upper left part of the circle. And we share Edmonton stories to drive awareness of our destination, which will hopefully lead to Edmonton being on a traveler's dream list. And then they will consider booking a trip. Next slide, please. Okay. So we'll quickly touch on what changes have come about due to COVID. Um, as our travel media efforts are tied to encouraging travel both regionally and long haul, we've obviously had to adapt our strategy to the current situation. Um, this webinar will primarily focus on what travel media is and how you're able to work with us rather than the current situation, as I mentioned before. 
Um, however, as you can see here, we do sit in the recovery phase indicated in orange uh, seen in this picture. So that indicates that we're targeting travelers within the region, meaning Alberta. Um, so the next recovery phase would include national travel, followed by limited international travel, and then ultimately we'll reach a point where we can hopefully go back to normalized travel across the globe. Um, this doesn't mean, however, that there isn't opportunity for you to market in a more local, regional way. Um, the potential market size for in-province travel from September to December 2020 is roughly 1.5 million Albertans, and this is likely indicative of the U.S. border being closed until at least October 31st. Um, the potential market size for travelers from the rest of Canada to Alberta from August to December 2020 is just over 1 million, um, with the highest potential being from Ontario, followed by BC, then Quebec, and Saskatchewan. Next slide, please. All right, so Explore Edmonton has identified six primary markets that we focus, focused the majority of our time in pre-COVID. Um, and as you can see here, that includes Canada, US, China, UK, Netherlands, and Germany. Um, so we work to, def to defend the uh, direct air service into Edmonton from these four markets um, by driving awareness. Um, and then as you can see below, we have our supportive markets, which includes Belgium, France, Mexico and Japan. Um, you're all aware that air service into Edmonton has drastically changed since the beginning of the year. Um, with international flights being directed to Calgary, Vancouver, Montreal, and Toronto, and of course the heavy travel restrictions in place, um, we will not be focusing our efforts again, as I've mentioned, <laughs> towards these markets for the time being. Um, rather, we're aligning with Travel Alberta and we'll focus um, on those local and regional travelers, so Albertans, um, followed by BC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario once the interprovincial travel is more encouraged. So, um, in a more exciting, on a more exciting note, after a five month pause, KLM will, will be resuming their uh, non stop service from Edmonton to Amsterdam, and that begins October 29th, 2020 and they'll be flying twice weekly. Um, it does look a little different than it did in the past with the stop into that uh, main hub Calgary for the time being. Um, and our team, Explore Edmonton, has worked really closely with Edmonton International Airport, uh, KLM and Tourism Jasper on a KLM campaign for the last few years. Um, and the campaign really encouraged Dutch travelers to visit Edmonton and Jasper during the ski season. Um, while the campaign has been put on pause, we're still working to ensure that we keep Edmonton top of mind um, for those Dutch travelers. Um, and this includes working with media in the Netherlands still to promote that Edmonton Jasper story, uh, story for 2021 and 2022. All right, next slide. All right, how can we work together? So we work very closely with the destination development team at Explore Edmonton. So with their awareness and new products uh, and experiences, we're able to keep these story ideas top of mind for when we pitch media. So always knowing what's new and what's coming into Edmonton is key. So images and digital flat sheets are also extremely important um, for us when pitching stories. A travel writer or content creator won't always visit Edmonton for the story that they're producing and therefore will rely on us to provide them with accurate information and images to accompany their story. If we don't have images, we are at a disadvantage. Even if the writer or content creator is coming to Edmonton for their story, they often like to visualize and have a better understanding of what it is they'll be seeing or experiencing ahead of time. So a digital flat sheet is important for the same reason. It allows us to have the facts and information needed when pitching and is a reliable information source for the content creator or the writer when they're in Edmonton. We'll go into a little bit more detail about sending out news releases and how to do that. Um, we also turn to our local businesses and attractions to host media when they're in destination. So prior to media arriving on a media visit, we will have worked with them on their itinerary to ensure we understand the story and we understand what places they want to visit and what places they should visit for the strongest story possible. 
we will reach out to our partners as we build the itinerary and find a day and time that you're able to host the media guest. And it's really important to have someone that you trust or have yourself as the ambassador for your business um, and an ambassador for Edmonton as well to be present and welcome the media guest. Um, an important thing to note when hosting media is that they often have limited time in Edmonton and therefore experiences may have to be sh shortened slightly. So for example, a four hour experience um, may need to be cut down to a one and a half hour or two hour version of the experience. Um, and again, this is where the value of digital flat sheet or images that you can send the media away with um, and that personal touch of meeting them um, is just invaluable for providing um, additional information on your experience. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're going to talk about marketplaces. So a marketplace is an event that facilitates speed dating style appointments with qualified media and travel destinations or products. So an example would be Nancy or I sitting down across from um, a publication like Condé Nast Traveler and pitching our stories about Edmonton to them. So what exactly happens in a marketplace? So before we meet with the media, we research the writer, past articles they've written, their topic interests, and we prepare our pitches. We then create a meeting schedule for the day and meet with media for approximately 12 minutes where we pitch our story ideas to them. After the marketplace, we send follow up to each and every media that we met with regarding stories that were of interest to them in the hopes that we will secure a media visit and the resulting media coverage. So this is why it's so important for us to constantly be in the know of what's new and what's happening in Edmonton so that we're able to speak to it at these marketplaces. So as you can see in 2019, we attended six marketplaces and in 2020, before COVID hit, we did manage to attend two marketplaces and those were IMM New York and Vicanti Burrs in Amsterdam in collaboration with our marketing team. We also held a media dinner while in Amsterdam in which 12 top tier Dutch writers and content creators attended and took part in our Edmonton presentation. In January 2020, um, Travel Alberta put on a private media event prior to IMM New York and we had Blair Lebsack, head chef of Range Road, come in and prepare the dinner using all local Alberta ingredients. Mackenzie and her mother, Matricia, um, also joined us and presented on creator stories, shared their knowledge with the group, and performed with drumming and singing. It was a really amazing event and everyone really loved it. This January, we'll be attending IMM virtually alongside Travel Alberta and our other DMO partners in the province. Um, and it's interesting to note at this time during COVID, people are still consuming travel content and they're actually consuming content now more than they ever have before. And this is likely because they can't travel and still want to have the, fear, the feeling or the experience of reading about uh, or experiencing a destination through story. Next slide, please. All right, here are some photos of us at marketplaces. So on the left is um, myself at the World Winter Sport Expo in Beijing. And the two photos on the right are of Nancy and myself at Go Media Marketplace. Next slide, please. All right, so while we do pitch to many freelancers, publications, bloggers, influencers, uh, and other media in general, we always strive um, for those top tier publications. For example, Globe and Mail, WestJet Magazine, and then you'll see some listed there in more of our uh, international markets that we pitch to. Um, oftentimes we get media requests directly from those journalists, freelancers, um, and influencers, and we'll evaluate these on an individual basis to determine if they fit our needs and our stakeholders' needs. Um, Travel Alberta and Destination Canada will also send several media visits our way throughout the year. In addition, um, media can also submit uh, media visit requests directly through our website. So outside of media visits, we're always providing information support, we call it. Um, so we provide that to media that reach out looking for any additional information. So that could be even photos that they need, what's new, specific dates, um, anything like that that we're able to help them with for a story that doesn't necessarily involve them coming to Edmonton. 
Um, we also work really close with the marketing team when bringing social influencers into Edmonton to, to ensure that they're able to engage with them on our Explore Edmonton social channels. Um, and then as you can see in the last bullet here, in 2019, we hosted 55 press trips. Um, and it's important to note too that many of those press trips actually had several journalists or content creators on them rather than just one individual. So quite impressive and great, great news for Edmonton. All right, next slide, please. So here's a little infographic on what the process from beginning to end can be like with media visits. Um, so it all starts with a, pit, a pitch carefully tailored to the journalist um, and their story interests. So once that visit is confirmed, we begin working on a personalized itinerary. So next, they'll obviously then arrive in Edmonton to experience our city, um, the activities and experiences that we've outlined for them, attractions, festivals, culinary scene, you name it. Um, and then we'll typically host them for a dinner in which we can put a face to the name and really get to talk to them about our great city and, and more for their story. Um, then once they return back home, they'll begin working on their coverage. And the coverage doesn't always get published right away. So this is important to keep in mind. Um, patience is key. Sometimes we are making the strategic arrangements for coverage to be released at a certain time of year. Um, potential travelers within each of the different markets are known to book their travel at different times of the year, or perhaps it's a summer story that obviously it makes more sense to come out a little bit before summer. Um, so this is all stuff that we keep in mind. Um, after the coverage is published, we'll put it into Simple View, which is our CRM da database, um, and we'll tag all the partners involved so that they're able to view the piece under their um, account. We then give it a quality score out of 10 based on things such as whether or not the story has a unique Edmonton experience mentioned, um, a desirable image included, a call to action, or if it makes the reader inclined to visit. Um, and then we also include the reach or circulation of the piece in our Simple View report. All right, next slide. And here's some fun photos of us hosting media in and around the city. Um, so Elk Island, out at Cafe Linnea, at a restaurant. So it's always a nice time when we get to meet them face to face. Next slide. All right. So here are some uh, hosting best practices. So when working with you to host media at your experience, restaurant, business, what have you, it always goes a long way to welcome them and give a quick five minute or so overview um, or elevator pitch of your business. So it's best to plan in advance to ensure that the experience is seamless from start to finish and be prepared for the arrival of the group um, and understand that sometimes timing can be a challenge. So groups can run a bit late, their itineraries are often quite full. Um, and when the group is with a guide, however, they will always call you and let you know that they are running more than 15 minutes late. Um, but just something to keep in mind, we have to be a little bit flexible. Um, and the most important thing is to always be an Edmonton ambassador. So we really would appreciate it. Just please don't ever ask, why are you here? It's freezing. It's the dead of winter. <laughs> Chances are we're actually promoting winter in, in Edmonton. So let's just share what we love about the city um, and be a great Edmonton ambassador. Awesome. Next slide. Okay. What makes a good story? So if the story is timely and connects with something being covered in the media is always great. How is your product or experience different from other experiences out there? Can you find something different about it, a certain angle? Um, this could include anniversaries, milestones, unique experiences, new elements, openings, anything that you think might be worthy of a story. And if you're not sure if it is, feel free to reach out to us and we'll let you know. Sometimes it might be worthy of a entire story all on its own, but we can weave it into a larger travel story, such as a listicle. So an example of a listicle would be top 10 places to visit this winter in Alberta. Next slide, please. All right, now we're gonna talk about news releases. So the first step is to consider if a news release is the right tool for your announcement. So if you want to send your news out to every media outlet in Canada, a very large group of media, a news release is a great way to do that. However, if you'd like to share the news just locally or regionally, 
um, finding those contacts and sending it out via email might be the way to go and will definitely be a cheaper option. So next step, if you decide that news release is the way to go, is to identify your audience and break down each audience segment so that you're very clear on who it is you want to reach. Find your angle. Every good news story has an angle. It could connect to something in the news already, something timely. Again, it could be an anniversary. Next, you're gonna to wanna to write your headline. So your headline should grab the attention of news editors and producers. Um, they can get hundreds of news releases in one day. Include at least one to two quotes in your news release. And Globe Newswire through the Canadian Press Network offers, your, offers a delivery system that delivers your news directly into newsroom editorial systems and into the desktops of journalists at almost 700 media outlets served by C Canadian press across Canada. And that includes newspapers, magazines, news websites, and broadcast stations. And the cost for sending out a news release, it varies, but it can be anywhere from about $300 up to $600, depending on the outlets that you'd like to send it to and your word count of your news release. Next slide, please. All right, now we're going to talk about media measurement and our key performance indicators. So we measure the following. Um, circulation is essentially the number of copies distributed. Reach is the total number of people exposed to a medium during a given period and could either see or hear the content. So this also includes um, unique monthly visitors of a website. Um, so when working with influencers and bloggers, we're able to get this information from them, as Nancy mentioned, in the form of a Google Analytics uh, screenshot. Next is our quality score. So um, as the title shows, this basically scores the quality of the article. So it's based off a set of 10 questions that we ask for each piece of coverage. And some of those questions include, does it contain a desirable image? Does it contain a unique experience? Uh, does it make the reader want to visit the destination? And we also have leveraged uh, dollars from Travel Alberta, which is known as co-op funding. And this is funds that Travel Alberta has set aside that we can apply for in order to further our media efforts. And I'll just touch um, on some of our targets for 2019. So we were able to surpass our 2019 targets. And we finished the year with $42,000 of leveraged dollars from Travel Alberta. Our media coverage reach was over 185 million. And our quality score out of 10, it's an average score for the year. And the average came out to 8.51 out of 10, which is great. Next slide, please. All right, so we have a media monitoring service, um, an agility PR database, and that's what we utilize to keep track of coverage, both that we've had a hand in directly or did not have a hand in. Um, and that way we're able to monitor what is being said about Edmonton um, and from where. So the PR database, it allows us to search for and identify who's writing about specific topics, um, such as travel and tourism and for what type of publication, where they're based, where the publications they write for are based, and much more filters that we're, allowed, we're able to apply. Um, and this really allows us to target journalists to pitch to. Um, and then for social media measurement, we use a social media database such as Dove, uh, Dovetail, Dovetail. <laughs> um, and that provides a thorough report on influencers, including data such as their quality audience, authentic engagement, their audience demographics, and that includes which country uh, the majority of their audience is from, um, growth charts, and then their audience interests. So this really helps us vet which influencers we would like to work with and that make the most sense for both our brand um, and sharing the Edmonton story. So we always also ask for a screenshot um, of those content creators, most recent Google Analytics, like Meredith mentioned. All right, next slide. All right, so here is some of our coverage from 2019 and 2020 um, as a direct result of our efforts. So we'll start with the top left, um, the Forbes article. So Sandra McGregor visited Edmonton in October 2019 and published Discover Why Edmonton, Alberta is one of Canada's hottest destinations on Forbes.com. 
And this was um, published January 2020. And Forbes.com sees 1.6 million unique daily visits. And the article has an earned media value of just over $40,000. We'll go to the next piece, which is just below the Forbes piece. Um, this is a article from The Independent, a UK by a UK journalist by the name of Giovanna Dunmall. And she visited Edmonton in late 2018 and published a foodie tour of Edmonton, Canada's most exciting culinary city. The article was published last February, had an, er sorry, a unique monthly visit of just over 900,000 and an earned media value of just over $22,000. And last but not least, on the right-hand side of the screen is um, a piece from freelance writer Ingrid Hofstra. This is our newest piece of coverage and she visited Edmonton from February 2nd to 10th. And while she was here, Ingrid stayed at the new JW Marriott Edmonton Ice District, experienced multiple winter festivals and attended an Edmonton Oilers hockey game, was also able to check out the Royal Alberta Museum and explored Edmonton's culinary scene. Her story was published in National Geographic Netherlands on September 11th, 2020. And the circulation of National Geographic Netherlands is 228,000. And all three of these articles received a media quality score of 10 out of 10. Next slide, please. Okay, so this here is a video that we created for one of our marketplaces, Go Media 2018, that was held in Calgary. Um, and we created it to showcase Edmonton's incredible distillery and culinary scene. Um, at that event, we had Chef Shane Chartrand and Chef Blair Lovesack from Range Road um, prepare lunch for over 300 conference attendees. So it was a huge success, a really special moment. Um, and now we'll give you the opportunity to take a look at the video. We've seen a nice change in the food scene in Edmonton. We have more restaurants that are doing unique things. I think we've seen a shift to independent restaurant, and I think the independent restaurants have decided that they're going to kind of focus on one thing and do it really well. And so it just shows how far our community has come, the farming community, the agriculture community, and it allows us to be on a world stage and don't have to go outside of the province and, and look elsewhere for our foods. My name is Blair Lebsack and I'm the chef and owner of Range Road. Well, Range Road, the name came from how we get our food. So we travel on Range Roads to get our food and by us, you know, continually going out on Range Roads. If we want to talk about local food, then let's be a bit more specific and let's be really open about where we're getting our food from. And we work directly with farmers. We wanted people to trust us to do our food. We didn't say that we're a specific type of food. We kind of left it open and we said we're interpreting the Alberta terroir into the food that we're doing. And I think that's what we want people to take away from our restaurant is that we're being challenged and using all the ingredients to the best of our ability. And it's all being grown right in our backyards. Now we're starting to see things that match up with us. You know, now the craft distillers that are that are doing really well. And so Strathcona is another one of those. They're taking it to another extreme of being able to use local products to make these award-winning spirits. My name is Adam Smith. I'm the founder and uh, master distiller at Strathcona Spirits. Strathcona Spirits is Edmonton's first distillery in history and the smallest distillery in North America. We make a vodka, a gin, and a barrel-aged gin out of very local ingredients. Distilling has not really been done in this part of the world. The province changed the laws to allow craft producers into the industry. So I thought, well, this would, could be a very fascinating thing to do in such an amazing part of town. And we opened in December of 2016. We use juniper from the Alberta Badlands and Seabuck Thorn that we pick here in Edmonton out of people's backyards, off the meridians and river valleys of the city. Oh, rose hips here. When I pour a taste for people here in the tasting room and I tell them that it's made with berries that are picked, you know, eight blocks this way on a road they might travel every day, 
people just start seeing more of what is around them. We make a very unique product out of an area that has never seen distilling before. So poised uniquely, made uniquely, in a place with interesting connections and stories. So with our background as an underground music venue emerging into a distillery that's a partner of the arts here in town is uh, made for an interesting brand. My name is Shane Chartrand. I'm the executive chef of SC Restaurant in the River Crew Resort and Casino. My food is indigenous progressive cuisine. It's just ever changing. Whatever indigenous fire feast I'm doing, I don't just cook, I listen as well. The idea of that would be my interpretation and my respect to their area, and then I incorporate that into my food. I like to try to keep it the way I was taught by my dad, follow the rules, plus know that I am an indigenous person and just hunt what, what's enough for me. It's just knowing where your food comes from. That makes the meal and the experience that much better. Edmonton has had an overwhelmingly positive reception in local-centric dining. We have great restaurants opening all the time, cocktail places that are really innovative. It's delicious, it's great, it's real, it's true, and you've got to hear some stories. That's what it's all about. Awesome. I really like that video. I've never watched the full thing. Uh, so that was really exciting for me. Now, now we're going to pass it over to me for a little while. Uh, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, some best practices for media from Indigenous Tourism Alberta. And uh, when we look at Indigenous tourism, uh, we always look at authenticity as the key part of indigenous tourism so we're going to talk about some kind of like tips tricks best practices when you're working with media so one of the first things uh, if you are going to be hosting media for your experiences, it's really important that you are careful to not hone in on stereotypes. Uh, indigenous tourism, you know, even Shane Chartrand in that video, he said, my food is progressive indigenous culinary, right? And so uh, we work really hard to showcase our culture and indigenous people as being present day uh, rather than always showing those kind of old times um, so this is this is really important that you sh you can showcase your traditional customs your practices but also remember that uh, we are present day people too the other tip is uh, be very be very aware with media of what can and cannot be photographed. Um, in my experiences, I've, I've worked with a couple different media people to take them on tours, etc. Um, they're, they're very respectful, but it's also really good to have those key messages in during your experience of, hey, please don't photograph this, whether it is, it is smudging. I know that it depends on the person, uh, depends on the nation for smudging, but even for if you're going to be hosting them for any kind of ceremony, just make sure that they know what they can and cannot photograph and that you're being aware of that and that you, you talk to them about that. And then always, this goes for both sides, always asking me for photographing sacred uh, items. So make sure, again, that your your uh, messaging that as well, like, hey, you can definitely photograph this, please don't photograph this. And then this is a huge one. Oftentimes, uh, if somebody's like a vlogger or they want to have a story and include indigenous music, um, make sure that if you are a drummer that you get copyright for the specific drum songs that you're singing. Uh, I know because I'm a drummer myself, drum songs can be gifted. So it's always important to make sure that you have copyright both from if it's if it's somebody who does fiddling to uh, working with the flute 
to drumming songs that you that you have the copyright of that and that you pay that person for the licensing of that song. And then this this can be a tough one. This is a little bit of a tricky when it when it comes to uh, working working with media because we know, uh, for example, if if a community was going to host media for a community based tourism experience and there happens to be a funeral, the community will really shut down. But this can be a tricky thing as well because a lot of media will only have a specific time that they're in town for. So just being aware of this uh, and make sure that you that you have somebody that maybe can host that media in case anything happens on community. Uh, we talk about this in our community tourism readiness. Uh, you know, just having having staff maybe outside of the community that could host that media just in case. Um, any kind of ceremony or funeral ended up happening in that community. And then if you're going to be on nation land, uh, hosting media on nation land, just make sure again, what can be filmed, what can't be filmed, that there's that respect on that land, um, that you're showcasing only what your community or the entrepreneur wants to showcase. Um, media is one of those things that you, like ideas get pitched but you get to choose what you showcase to to uh your media so always make sure that you have your community to back you up on yes absolutely you can share that uh that you get the permissions if you're showcasing certain cultural aspects uh and that you're showcasing what you want to showcase and then also know that in case, like for example, um, my mom works with media down in Jasper and she likes to take media to, to um, certain sacred sites around Jasper, but she always makes sure to contact Jasper Parks that it's okay to go onto that site or the different indigenous partners from Jasper. So it's the same with, make sure that you have permission to film in certain areas. And then be aware and careful of cultural appropriation, um, whether that's you yourself or just make sure that the media knows as well, um, kind of those key messages so that so that nothing is being is being uh, appropriated. Oftentimes when you're when you're working with media or let's say you you're going to host meeting you really want to show them an elder's blessing or um, have a knowledge keeper come in and do a story for them or let's say you are media or you are one of the middlemen for media and you want to ask an elder to do a prayer or a knowledge keeper um, it's customary to provide protocol I always tell people that protocol isn't fixed it varies from community and person but when in doubt ask so I know when I when my mom and I did the media event in New York with Travel Alberta, uh, Rose Bolton, one of the Travel Travel Alberta media workers there, she gifted us tobacco, and that was part of actually the presentation. And then we explained, you know, she gifted us tobacco in red cloth because she's asking us to teach aspects of our culture. So that so protocol is is like that. Um, so it's always my recommendation to have tobacco and red blot, broadcloth. If you're not too sure, you can always ask the person to and say, hey, what would be appropriate to gift for you as as protocol for asking you to do this? And usually people will will uh, will let you know. Again, always ask before you photograph things and uh, also ask permission for filming from chief and council if you're filming on reserve land. Oh, and here's, I just put it again, because you always have to be careful of, <laughs> of uh, just be aware and careful of cultural appropriation as well. So I'm, that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, I would first off like to thank Nancy and Meredith so much for coming and for sharing your expertise. I know even myself, I learned a lot in this in this presentation um, I used to get to 
work with Nancy and Meredith and still do, still do, just my office isn't right beside theirs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thank Thanks you so much. Us. Yeah. yeah. And so we do actually have a couple questions. So if anybody wants to ask a question, feel free to put it into the poll. But I see we have about three questions here. So, so the first question that we have is, do for Nancy and Meredith, do you need online booking in order to work with media? Online booking. Oh, okay. Like booking their product or experience online. Yeah. That's a really great question. Um, I think it's definitely an advantage because when they do publish their story, um, especially with the fact that most of the stories end up online, um, if we're able to link to a direct booking, um, that benefits you ultimately um, because those that read are able to, to book. Um, the answer is no, <laughs> having just said that. Um, you can still have a story to tell. You can still be included in a story. Um, it's just more to your advantage if you do, mm. if, that, if that answers that. <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, yeah. And just to add to that, um, it's, I mean, as long as you have a website, that's great too, because then they can go to your website. They can click the link, go to your website and perhaps contact you by phone. Um, but I think just in the increasing digital age that we're in, it's always great to have that online booking. So it might be something um, worth looking into. Awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect. And then one of the other questions that we had is, is there a time of year that media usually come to visit? Also a good question. Yeah. Um, we find a lot of pickup in the summer months um, coming from Travel Alberta, I think mostly. I'll let Mayor speak more to this too, but it really depends on our markets. So um, as I mentioned briefly before, we're really targeting, uh, we're targeting pre-COVID, um, the Netherlands during winter. Um, and that's for the ski season specifically um, because their ski season over in Europe um, many are going to the Alps, for example, which is quite crowded. Um, and the cost to have a ski vacation in the Alps is quite similar and comparable if they were to just come all the way to Canada, wow. um, the direct KLM flight. So it totally depends what story we're pitching, what market we're pitching. Um, and we are a four season destination at the end of the, the day, right? So we want to be promoting Edmonton as a year round travel destination. So yeah, Mayor, anything to add to that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Very well said. Um, I think Travel Alberta has had quite a focus on winter in the last couple of seasons. Mm -hmm. And so we're really kind of following their lead and it's always great to tell those winter stories. Um, especially in Edmonton, where we have so many great festivals and winter activations. We are a winter city. Um, but yeah, it just depends. I think there are some media that are adverse to traveling um, to Canada in the winter and others that are curious about it and may want to tell that winter story and talk about traveling, especially as Nancy said, if they're interested in skiing, cross-country skiing or downhill skiing. Um, so we often partner with Jasper in those stories. Um, so there's definitely opportunity for year round storytelling. That's awesome. You, sorry, just to add, um, like we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, you can go to both our website, um, and the travel Alberta industry site for more information on those markets, just to get a better sense of what they're looking for. Um, because yeah, as I mentioned, each one's a bit different. Germans love to RV. They love indigenous experiences. Um, so that brings them into those summer months, right? So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good note in terms of the target markets because uh I know we previously had a had a webinar on on the target markets for indigenous tourism and we're always hammering home to our members, you know, look at your target market, what is your target market? And that really comes into play even for media. Totally. Definitely. Yeah. 
Amazing. And then we have one final question. And the question is, do you get to control how much or how little somebody will write about you in a blog? You do? Yeah, um, we do. So um, with writers and journalists um, writing a piece, usually they'll give us an idea. If it's for, say, the Globe and Mail or WestJet Magazine, they'll usually give us an idea of the length of the article. Um, but when we're working with um, online content creators and bloggers, um, that's definitely something that can be negotiated. So um, Nancy and I have both negotiated, you know, a thousand word story with um, five to seven images and links throughout. Um, and I would say it's definitely um, positive to get those hyperlinks in the articles if they're digital and online. Um, and it, you are well within your right to ask them to put those in. Um, again, best to negotiate those right off the bat. Um, but yeah, Nancy, anything to add? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah, and, and just like Mare said, anything is negotiable, right? So if they're blogging, oftentimes they also have social media that they're gonna be promoting um, their content on as well. So negotiate how many posts you get, make sure your handle is tagged, um, hashtags are used, all things that you're, you have the right to, to ask to be included. That's awesome. Amazing. Well, everybody, so again, this will be posted onto our YouTube. And if you guys have any questions at any point of time, uh, you can reach out to either us at Indigenous Tourism Alberta, or here is Meredith's and Nancy's information. So that does bring us to the end of our time. And again, Meredith and Nancy, I'd like to thank you guys so much for, yeah, for participating today and for teaching us and all of our members at ITA about travel media and how we can work together. Happy to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Amazing. Thanks, Mackenzie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Bye.